good morning everyone uh, welcome to this new session on uh, efficiency now the moment uh, uh, at least the engineers amongst us uh, look at efficiency they say ah i know about this uh, for example they would say uh, a motor is supposed to have a rated output of 110 uh, megawatt uh, kilowatt and it is only giving me a 100 megawatt so uh, probably the uh, the motor is running at an efficiency of 100 divided by 110 uh, some would argue that no 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 this is not the way efficiency is calculated efficiency is how efficiently how do you convert uh, input to output right uh, so it is not uh, rated output against the actual output some people would argue that it is actually uh, the ratio of uh, how much output do you get uh, per unit of input uh, that you have given so uh, what is all what 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 is all this and how does it matter to a business how does it matter to a decision making unit uh, that's what we are going to look at uh, in in these uh, series of uh, lectures so uh, even before we get started let me clarify uh, let me clarify that uh, uh, we may be looking at uh, efficiency as uh, uh, rated uh, the actual output divided by rated output right and uh, or uh, as we said some people will say it is output divided by the input so let me clarify right away that we are actually going with this definition rather than this definition right uh, so it is output divided by input that's the way we are going to proceed and uh, we are going to focus only on uh, economic uh, efficiency so uh, let us let us uh, quickly understand uh, what what context are we talking about so what does economics teach us? Uh, uh, e economics essentially is a, is a science of, uh, uh, if uh, it, it teaches us effective utilization of the resources uh, so that uh, we can get maximum benefit out of utilization of these resources. So uh, that's, that's the core, right? I mean, uh, we can argue uh, that economics actually, I agree that it's a very, very rich uh, science. But uh, this is one of the most important thing that uh, economics hopefully uh, helps us understand. Uh, within the economic uh, ideas, there is something called productive efficiency. Uh, now, what is this productive efficiency? Productive efficiency uh, is, is that aspect of e efficiency which focuses on maximizing the output under given set of constraints that you operate under. Right. Uh, so, uh, when we calculate this productive efficiency, we usually don't worry about uh, are, we, uh, are we allocating uh, the resources correctly. Uh, do we, uh, uh, we will not worry about whether we are in the correct market, uh, whether we are manufacturing the correct set of products. Let us not worry about that. Once all those decisions have been made, how do you maximize output given the conditions that we operate under? Now, uh, obviously technology is going to play an important role and we are throughout these calculations, uh, we are going to assume that the technology actually doesn't change. So uh, economic ideas essentially talk about something called an efficiency frontier, uh, efficiency envelope. So uh, what is this efficiency envelope or efficiency frontier? Essentially, if a economic unit is on that efficiency frontier, then we have a combination of output such that you cannot increase output of one aspect without affecting the output of the other aspect. Right. Uh, of course, uh, this is without any change of technology. So uh, let me say that again, what is what is the frontier then? Frontier is that optimal combination of outputs, right? The optimal combination of outputs such that you cannot increase uh, output number one without affecting the output number two, right? Uh, so uh, that's what uh, we mean by frontier and throughout these sessions, we are going to chase this very elusive idea of efficiency frontier, right? Uh, so uh, and obviously the organizations or uh, economic units that find themselves on the frontier they are going to be called as efficient uh, organizations or efficient economic units and the organizations uh, that unfortunately are not on this frontier they are going to be classified as inefficient economic units or inefficient organizations right so uh, uh, let us let us quickly understand as i as i had earlier described let us quickly understand how are we going to measure this efficiency so as I said earlier, in the simplest possible way, efficiency is going to be defined as a ratio of output to input. So a very simple uh, uh, diagrammatic representation would be something like this. 
you input something into a process uh, the production it could be a production process it could be a service process it could be anything right uh, and you get some certain output uh, we are actually not going to worry too much about what happens here that let let that be a black box we will we will only worry about how much input goes in and how much output comes out of this black box uh, the, as we said earlier we are not going to worry about uh, uh, what happens here right what technologies are used right so that that's not uh, that's not the uh, focus of the discussion here so yeah if we say that uh, efficiency is the ratio of output versus uh, input uh, very simple then what's the complication why do we need a separate uh, session on this uh, why why is it so complex uh, to calculate efficiency to measure efficiency to compare one economic uh, uh, unit uh, saying that this uh, this economic unit has a higher efficiency than uh, some other economic unit so why is it so complex why do you think it is complex well of course yes it is complex because any economic unit any organization in reality doesn't have a single input it always has a combination of inputs right so the input could be in terms of labor right uh, the labor itself could be classified in various uh, uh, skills uh, uh, various uh, uh, expertise uh, uh, various locations right uh, infrastructure uh, by infrastructure we could mean uh, uh, the buildings and the land and the machinery right uh, that all that is used essentially as an input to a, a, a production process uh, financial assets uh, financial inputs like money uh, right uh, uh, whether that money comes from uh, uh, financial assets whether that comes from loan right uh, so essentially everything that goes as an input that is as an investment into a production process uh, is your uh, resource they are they are called resources right uh, uh, very simple uh, uh, in in uh, other economic courses you would have understand uh, you would have you would have discussed uh, the three m's right uh, the man machine and money uh, so uh, man is essentially labor uh, uh, machine is essentially all the infrastructure and money is money right uh, so those three important uh, resources and there may be many more within these three or there may be many more outside of these three also so essentially we do we generally don't deal with single input very similarly on the other hand we don't deal with single output now output uh, of an economic unit uh, could be measured in various ways uh, output could be number of customers served output could be number of customers that you have acquired in this particular time period uh, we could be looking at profits we could be looking at sales volume we could be looking at revenue uh, right uh, it could be uh, uh, for a hospital it could be uh, the number of days uh, uh, number of days it took the patient uh, to recover right that could be one of the outputs uh, right uh, any 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 kind of benefit uh, that comes out of this uh, uh, this economic unit uh, is then output so essentially output tells us uh, uh, how how has the organization performed right uh, how has the uh, organization fared on that particular dimension that's essentially the output and that is why calculating efficiency is actually difficult because we have multiple inputs uh, we have multiple outputs even if we say simple ratio of uh, output versus input uh, it does get complicated why should it get complicated if you look at some of the common measures of uh, uh, quantifying efficiency various industries have various uh, uh, parameters uh, let us take retail industry right uh, let us take a mall now how do you measure output of a mall a most uh, commonly used measure of uh, understanding how the mall has performed let us say there are two malls in a particular uh, city we want to understand uh, which mall has done better right uh, a typical uh, uh, way to measure uh, uh, quote unquote efficiency of a mall uh, is uh, sales per square feet right uh, so mall has certain square foot of uh, retail area uh, those are rented out to various uh, uh, brands various uh, organizations and uh, they have uh, certain sales uh, uh, in a particular month in a particular week in a particular uh, year and a typical way to measure the uh, effectiveness of a mall or efficiency of a mall is to say what is the uh, sales per square feet right uh, uh, right now do you think not not right now but uh, pre pandemic uh, what do you think uh, uh, india's malls uh, were doing in terms of that particular parameter sales per square feet 
pre pandemic statistics essentially told us that uh, most of the malls were not doing that well on this parameter right so if we say efficiency of a mall is measured only in terms of sales per square feet we would have concluded na nah, they are not doing that great look at the other measure of uh, uh, understanding how the mall works now if we would have taken a different measure let us say uh, number of customers per week right number of customers per week right one of the one of the ways uh, that a mall can serve a community is uh, hopefully to attract lot of customers and uh, they get what they want uh if you look at all the statistics uh, uh, we have in india's mall we as in india's malls have been doing extremely well on attracting the customers to the mall the problem has always been converting these visits to actual sales so the point that i'm trying to make is uh, uh, we have various inputs and various outputs if you selectively pick some inputs and outputs and you define the efficiency of an economic unit uh you will end up concluding that the economic unit is doing well or doing not uh, not doing well but we can't look at uh this selective uh picking of input and output uh, what we are trying to understand in this session is a comprehensive uh measure of efficiency so uh, there are various uh, uh various uh, uh, various uh, things that uh, we will have to look at what are the things that we are going to focus on uh, what are we, what are the things we are going to focus on in this uh, session uh, the questions that we are trying to answer in this session are how does this uh, input and output work uh, when we have several inputs and several outputs right uh, that's what i have been talking about retail uh, industry now uh, then if we have this several input several output scenario how do you calculate uh, productive efficiency of an economic unit uh once again uh, let me clarify e by economic unit i i am going to uh, this term economic unit is going to be used very generically and uh, by this economic unit we are going to say that anything right uh, it may be uh, it may be a uh, uh, factory uh, it may be a hospital uh, it may be a university uh, it may be a person right uh, any uh, any agent uh, that is involved in economic activity we are going to call them as economic unit right uh, so we are we are trying to understand in this session how to calculate productive efficiency of an economic unit in presence of several inputs and several outputs hopefully next thing we are going to discuss is uh, how do we compare right uh, the measure that we are hopefully going to uh, design uh, uh, should be should help us in comparing several economic units in terms of their efficiency right uh, and lastly uh, we will try to answer that uh, question uh, we are going to uh, come up with this measure and calculate the efficiency of uh, every economic unit and then going to say ah these economic units are efficient these economic units are not so efficient now how does that help an inefficient unit we have to tell the inefficient unit what should they do so that they are also called efficient economic units right so if we find out that a particular economic unit is inefficient how can they become efficient what should they do should they reduce the input should they increase the output what exactly is our prescription to these inefficient units so that they also get into the efficient set of economic units right so these are the questions that we are going to answer as i said most of the times the common approaches don't work because common approaches to calculating and comparing efficiencies are focused on selective choices of inputs and outputs uh, some of the commonly used approaches uh, particularly in operations uh, operating ratios as uh, labor cost per transaction right uh, once again labor cost per transactions so you are only going to look at labor cost right and then you going to say ah this uh, economic unit is better in terms of labor cost but remember it is still labor cost only one of the outputs uh, considered Uh, for example uh, one of my colleagues at iit madras has done extensive research on uh, comparing the efficiency of cricket players now for a cricket player uh, runs per innings right uh, generally called the average right uh, average of a player tells us how good the player is but it will, it tells us only one aspect of uh, the player right and therefore uh, uh, even uh, when the cricket match is going on uh you often see on the screen several statistics quoted in uh, in addition to the average 
particularly if you are talking about T20s, uh, it's very common practice now to quote the strike rate. Now, what is the strike rate? Uh, strike rate is the number of uh, runs scored per 100 balls. That's also selectively picking one input and one output. Number of runs scored is output and uh, 100 balls is the input, right? Uh, if uh, uh, one player is doing pretty well on strike rate, it doesn't mean that the same player is doing pretty well on uh, runs per innings, right? Uh, so uh, problem with these uh, very uh, uh, localized uh, ratios uh, or operating ratios is it doesn't consider uh, the entire mix of inputs and outputs uh, which is very common in a, in, a, in a realistic setting. Now the other common approach uh, is to define what are called as financial ratios. For example price to earning ratio or uh, debt to equity ratio or EPS uh, earning per share. Uh, right, uh, very commonly used, uh, very commonly used to say that this organization is doing well, this organization is not doing uh, so well. Many of the investment decisions are uh, uh, made looking at uh, these uh, ratios. Uh, PE ratio is important, EPS is important, right. Uh, the problem with this kind of uh, approach uh, is that uh, we are assuming that everything can be converted to a dollar, right. Uh, everything uh, can be converted in, in monetary basis. In some situations that may or may not hold, right. Uh, uh, so uh, the problems with this approach uh, is that uh, nothing, uh, not everything can be converted in terms of currency basis, right. Uh, secondly, uh, uh, these uh, many of the financial ratios, not these in particular, but many of the financial ratios essentially uh, talk about profitability of an organization. organization. What we are currently dealing with is actually efficiency of a organization and remember, uh, not not any efficiency we earlier decided that we are going to focus on productive efficiency right the operating efficiency of a of an organization so we have to make the differentiation that uh, uh, if if you convert everything in terms of dollar terms are we looking at profitability whereas we should be looking at operating efficiency so uh, uh, that's that's the that's the context right uh, we are going to look at productive efficiency we are going to look at uh, uh, diverse combinations of inputs and outputs and our focus is not only to calculate uh, productive efficiency but actually compare organizations on the basis of this productive efficiency. Hopefully we should uh, at the by the end of the sessions uh, we should have some prescriptions for the inefficient unit as to what they should do if they wish to become efficient or if they wish to be called as efficient units. So let us end the session here and uh, uh, continue with this uh, in the next one.